I get the vach. You know, usually I tell you stories of tzaddikim. You know, but the truth is, Amich Kulm Sadiqim, every Jew is uh, a big tzaddik, so there's no reason why I can't tell you a story about two regular Yidin. So, this is a conversation between two chsidim that has been passed down in the generation. So, we don't know who said it, who the conversation was between, but we know it was between two chsidim, and the fact that it was sort of uh, uh, safeguarded in the tradition, it means that there was depth to this conversation, which certainly there is. So, the conversation goes like this one chassid asked his friend. He said, I have a Shiloh for you. So he says, okay, Yanka, what's your Shiloh? He says, my Shiloh is like this. When the king goes out and he's, you know, taking care and acting in an official way, he wears his crown. He said, yeah. What happens when the king goes home and he's, you know, sort of relaxing and retiring for the day and he takes off his royal clothing? What does he do with the crown? So this friend says, what he's with the crown? He takes the crown, he puts it on a, on a hat rack. He has a hook in his room for his crown. So the Chassid says, but I understand, the king, is, the king has all the, all the power in the world, he has all people acting as his servants, why doesn't he have a, spe- a special servant dedicated to be the one that he should rest his crown on his head? That this person, all day long, all night, he should just stand there, and he should be the coat rack. He should be the hat rack for the king. So that was his question. So the other Chassid responds, he says, hey, here's, it's an interesting idea, it would probably, probably be more respectful for the crown to be residing on a head than just on a hook, you know, on a hat rack. But if the king were to have a designated servant for, you know, to put the crown on his head, then that servant would eventually make the mistake of thinking that he's the king. And that's why the king doesn't do it. So then the chassid responded, I hear, it's a good point. But let's say there was such a servant that he himself, he only saw himself as a hat rack. He only saw himself as a hat rack then what would be then? So then the Chaz responded, uh, if you had a servant like that, there would be such a thing where a servant sees himself as nothing but a hat rack, then Taka, he could, then the king would be able to put his, his crown on such a servant's head. That's the conversation. You know, from all the tzaddikim that we have, you know, there's one, the one tzaddik that, that the Rabbani Shalom entrusted all of his prized possessions with, the one that, so to speak, Hashem gave his crown to this Jew, it's Moshe Rabbeinu. And why? Like, why, what makes Moshe Rabbeinu so special? He was more brilliant than everyone else. He was more meticulous in halacha than everyone else. He was more charismatic than everyone else. What was the Nakuda? What made Moshe Rabbeinu able to receive the crown of Hashem? To become the first king of the Jewish people, to be the one through which we can say, Tyrus Moshe, the Tyre of Moshe Rabbeinu. Hashem's crown, which is the Tyre, was given to Moshe Rabbeinu, Mamash. Why? The answer is because Moshe Rabbeinu saw himself as a hat rack. That was it. Moshe Rabbeinu is the hat rack. That's all he was. Just a vessel for Hashem. And because all he was, saw himself as is just a hat rack, because of that Hashem can place his crown on his head. And that's the lesson for all, every single one of us. The more we see ourselves as just emissaries of Hashem, just shluchim of the Rabbanu Shlolem, and just, just hat racks. We're just a bunch of hat racks walking around vessels for Hashem to bestow His goodness onto the world through us, then with that we'll be able to be like Moshe Rabbeinu and we'll be able to receive Hashem's crown. Hashem should bless us, so we should be zechet Hashem's crown and with there all the shefa that comes with it with a week full of brachas and yeshuas and nachas and simcha. Ad die. V'yaskot tzadik barachim and meher v'yamein